However, something would still be found if one were to dig well in the Vatican libraries. I hope the church will declassify it, and the world will turn out to be quite different. 876. Unfortunately, in the earthly heaven, in galaxies created unfortunate with great deficiencies, made, yes, on the model of the original by angels, what left their parents, there is a great deal of trouble and suffering. To get the energy and power of existence here now, we have to eat each other and specifically eat each other. The unfortunate food chain, an annoying and inexplicably nasty solution. It resulted from the mistakes of scientists and then from stupidity and hubris in the struggle for influence in the cosmos. But in heaven, this is no longer the case. There we eat God, we drink his blood, which allows it because only he emanates inexhaustible energy and can be plundered at will for all eternity, across the spaces of the vast spiritual cosmos. Freely drink his wine of love, without compromising the supplies he has in his eternal cellars. So you can have fun for all eternity. There will never be a shortage of wine, life and fun. We have it guaranteed. 877. Man is the same angel as they are in heaven. We came out of paradise as angels. At the moment we live on the edge of our galaxy, on its periphery, that is, in a village. This region is the village of the galaxy. After the great wars we landed here. Jesus, the great philosopher talked about it, but not everything was written down. What is in the Gospels are mere distortions and interpretations, not the original words of Jesus. It was more convenient for the powers that be not to write about it. The Vatican knows this, but it has locked knowledge away and has taken up economics and therefore also fraud. He himself does not use knowledge and does not allow others to use it. The words of Padre Pio. I would add, the expulsion of Adam and Eve from paradise, this is only synonymous with what happened to us originally. That is, the exit from heaven Padre Pio's words. There is the source of all our modern life troubles. 878. Love is a dance for everyone. You delight in this dance because love stares into your eyes all the time. It holds your hand and cuddles with you throughout your life, and you love it and don't know why. Charming is love. She flirts for you because she has chosen you alone as the goal of her joyful dancing delights. The more she devotes herself to you, the deeper she communicates you with God. 879. When the soul recognizes heaven inside its imagination, it can be said that it has ascended to a partial heaven. The fullness only comes after assuming a perfect heavenly body. This generally happens after death, but some people can taste it now, and they will no longer feel the death of the physical body, because the exchange of bodies occurred while the physical senses were still alive. Love for all and inner happiness, that's what they decide. Our love is the maker of whether we already live forever or are still born here in a material body. On this planet or even in another galaxy, the goal is one, to leave this uncomfortable cosmos to end poverty, suffering and death once and for all, and not to be born again in this can, a trap of the cosmos, to the phenomenon. Before the metaphors of intellect come to the knowledge of a strict phenomenon contained in the excellent library of mysticism before that, many mysterious interpretations will center around nature. As a result, thousands of beliefs are still not empirics and experience is not the power of causation to create spiritual tastes of the spiritual senses that science is slowly reaching are becoming real in the common sense of the omnipotence of a power hitherto unknown to us. There are studies on the transforming collective of scales in the rim of spirit ocean. It is also a fact that in the eyes of the diversity of ideas about the fullness of personality reveals the difficulty of true reflection. The most valuable future of collected mind components allows us to dissolve in the absolute needs bringing us in touch with the due seriousness of happiness. But without reservation, there is a deeper possibility 880. The soul will always teach the body to love others, to imbue the body with inspiration how to love unconditionally, how to live in harmony, how to exclude anxiety from life. The soul knows human weakness to hatred and prejudice. 
It will therefore urge tolerance until death, as various heralds of gentleness and forgiveness have done in the past. 881. Fable. In an incredibly distant world, many galaxies from Earth, there was an ocean of kindness. Those who dipped into it felt kindness from all of creation. From people, animals, flowers, plants, and from the various objects that lived on this planet. The ocean had absolutely wonderful properties. Whoever bathed in it, his life changed dramatically. The power of the ocean caused traumas, bad decisions, complicated lives, to be immediately turned into positives. Pain would pass, and things would resolve themselves brilliantly. Information about the fabulous ocean, however, did not reach all worlds. The reason was the beliefs of the ruling states. Thus, the inhabitants of countless planets could not bathe in the energy of benevolence, because this was not taught in any school. A few dreamers from Earth managed to move illegally against the beliefs and prohibitions of the rulers into the ocean of happiness. But when they experienced a fairy tale where money and power do not rule, they could no longer look at the evil world of earthlings. They always asked for asylum, they received it. But it was an asylum of a different type. They were given permission to go to the ocean and stay there, solely by means of telepathy. But, as it is with people who have big hearts and want to fill their cup of happiness to the brim, they wanted to have everything right away. For this reason, few of them are present with their thoughts by the earth. They prefer to stay in that one, a heavenly fairy tale. 882. It is worth realizing at least for a moment that we are carriers of RNA and DNA. There are discharges going on in these DNAs all the time, instantaneous chain reactions. It's worth knowing that the slightest emotion changes the arrangement of forces and chemical compounds in our mental and physical bodies. The central mechanism of our life is the photon reactor, which, through its micro-networks, spreads throughout the body, creating, invisible to the eye, our personal aura. The fuel of this reactor is consciousness, and then light, with all its components including the neutrino ray, a unique spin permeating everything, moving faster than sunlight. Quantum physicists report that the speed at which the halo vibrates in reality and thus our second body, is 400 billion pulses per second. On the other hand, the realization of anything as a result of brain processes occurs as a result of 2,000,000 impulses per second. This process makes up our sensations, thinking, and bodily participation in the physical world. The same physicists and DNA specialists say that the double helix, which consists of two molecular strands, and each strand contains 32 codons, polarized between each other along a line of eight, expressing the symbol of infinity. You can see from this how the body, which is simple to use, has within it improbable structures that we are yet to discover. The geneticists of the cosmos, the angels who programmed our bodies, knew their craft well. But not everything went right, we die as bodies. Jesus the great philosopher came to this and proposed to leave these DNA codes because they do not guarantee stable life. He proposed spiritual, eternal DNA, which are found in the kingdom of heaven, with God. 883. The human body is surrounded by a hologram of light energy. This hologram works inside the body and outside. Actually, thanks to this electromagnetic structure, humans and the rest of the world live. Even the planets have it. It is worth quoting some data, for example. The brain is made of cells and neurons, which resemble a starfish in shape. Neurons send impulses to each other by means of protrusions, or dendrites. The number of neurons is estimated at about 100 billion, and the connections between them about 100 trillion. However, human intelligence does not depend on the number of neurons, but on the connections these cells are able to make between each other. Each neuron can communicate with its neighbors in many different ways. It has been calculated that between 100,000 and 1 million different chemical reactions take place in the brain per minute. The number of possible connections between neurons is so huge that writing them down in normal handwritten numbers would create a line 10. 
5 million kilometers long. The isotope cascades of quantum mechanics and biochemical cascades are unimaginable in their operation and precision. Man can only admire all this, despite the fact that it is happening within himself, he never realizes it. Man lives with other things, giving him satisfaction and happiness. An interesting conclusion can be drawn, namely that consciousness and all this neural, biochemical life is only an aid to achieving contentment and happiness. Man uses light all the time, but enjoys quite differently and with something else. Isn't this puzzling? But light also has another face, a deeper one, which creates in us an impulsive state of happiness, captured from the soul. This is so roughly. But I will now give a shocking piece of information from Padre Pio, who said to me, Even if you had water in your head instead of your brain, you would still think. And Padre Pio swept away this scientific argument. He bilocated himself, then he knew what he was talking about. 884. Light does not mean that it has to be bright and luminous. Not necessarily everywhere. Because, for example, speaking of an element of the cosmos, which is undoubtedly our tummy, there is, after all, total darkness in it. Despite the fact that it ultimately functions thanks to cells, using biochemistry and light, intergalactic spaces are also dark, yet rays constantly penetrate it. It can be said that light here has a different color, a different saturation, a different structure. There are many mysteries ahead. But I always emphasize, it is the spirit that has the power to design everything. In other words, the spirit has the power to create, to pass through walls, etc. With the help of the spirit, even the material body can dilate and penetrate everything. The soul can split and be in many places at the same time. Padre Pio's words, 885. The universe is real, empirically experiential, as a spilled ocean of matter, time and space. Everywhere its basis is spirit and light. However, since matter destroys itself, causes the death of our bodies, one can conclude that the souls who created it were not intended to be perfect. One thing is certain, it was not God who created this anti-heaven, this kind of matter. God only created the eternal heaven. Everything that exists beyond the original heaven is the work of the souls what came out of this heaven. This was caused by the freedom of God's children. Learning continues. Be able to restrain yourself a little in your freedom. 886. Expanding our knowledge base automatically puts us in a very good position. Through cognition, we become better representatives of love. Through knowledge and cognition, we can live and function wonderfully. For our life is a perpetual action and reaction, whether one wants it or not. If someone says that in heaven there are no wants, desires, he is a weak philosopher. Light and soul dispose of life and all its manifestations of goodness and love in this universe and in the universe of God heaven. In our universe there are many cracks on the structures of light, so we suffer and die. The soul, thanks to bad matter, has also scratched itself. It has grown into selfishness. The soul has a serious flaw. Padre Pio's words, 887. We will never create a bright future if we get rid of the science, aspirations, new technologies that we could create, making it easier for the human body and the planet, naturally, economically and ecologically, to function. We live for now here. Everything must be used for good. Technology is the work of the spirit. There is such a system prevailing here, in which everything breaks down and destroys. Padre Pio's words. 888. However, it is worth knowing that immortality is obtained through mystical knowledge, not technical knowledge. Through spiritual science we will arrive at an immortal soul, and the body must die anyway. People who illuminate life with themselves do not need typical science. Mystics can move mountains with their thoughts. However, let's not forget that nature, the entire cosmos are designed by a higher class of scientists, angels. What once came out of the original heaven to create private heavens? Every grass was meticulously programmed. Every plant worm was given the breath of life. And the angels did it. Angels, on the other hand, were created by God. We are small creators. Things did not always work out well for us. 
Not all mutations were foreseen, but those angels from other extraterrestrial civilizations who favor us are revealing more and more truth about the creation of material life. Others more arrogant want to understate our spiritual levels. 889. The history of evolution into which we were once crammed shows us how we are ennobled by it on the one hand and terribly stifled and debilitated on the other. Unfortunately, the real heaven in the galaxies, there is none. Paradise is not here and never was, Padre Pio's words. Science in this case did not turn out to be ideal. The reason, the quarrels and hubris of the angel scientists. To this day, they do not forgive themselves. By force they maintain their heaven nature, this hell, purgatory, which, although beautiful at times, destroys every body and increases the hubris of consciousness. 890. As soon as perfect love is resurrected in us, it will show us the eternal knowledge of the most pleasant beauty without any suffering. But this will already be beyond the private heavens, that is, beyond the material universe. 891. If extraterrestrial civilizations are added to our picture of life, some of which contributed significantly to our downfall others to our rise, then we will have a more complete picture of the problem with our love. Material existence, with finding our soul, 892. The youngster recognizes concrete actions, needs concrete toys, does not like promises of tinkling, believing that something there. Even all the assurances of parents about this or that, takes seriously, empirically, and waits for concrete solutions. The child is consistent, incredibly enforces promises, and the word given beforehand. An adult, when he promises something, varies. Towards children, it is necessary to be verbal. Do not cheat, because it affects the child's character badly. So what is adult faith? It is pure manipulation. Adults have gotten rid of the empirical qualities of a child. They believe in everything that imagination creates. In this respect, they are no longer equal to children. The blind faith of adults is one of humanity's greatest disasters. In favor of faith, man runs away from science, does not want to study life, he's afraid of it. He prefers to say, I don't know, I don't understand, my reason doesn't grasp it. Surrounding himself with clever ideologies, faiths, politics, he stands on the sidelines. He fundamentally recognizes the principle of progress, but refuses to admit it to himself. For the sake of appearances he pretends to seek, but in fact he doesn't want to discover anything. He is content with unanswered problems. Is this what a child is like? He openly and spontaneously steps forward, opens himself to new games and fun. The world is open to him. Meanwhile, adults do not even want to live anymore. What does this indicate? After all, the purpose of life is to live and play. This proves the child. 893. Young children have no revelations, visions, feel no laws, are not interested in sociology, politics, economy, customs, culture. Nor do they care about any doctrines of various religions. Of course, it's not that an adult should get rid of all this. That's not the point. But that he should be able to do with one hand what is needed for life, and have the other hand free, carefree, joyful, eager to innovate, explore, enjoy everything like a child. 894. Through ignorance, a number of unnecessary concepts and stipulations are created in our imagination. Ignorance, of course, is the lack of progress, the inability to produce the right technology to make life easier for people. Ignorance creates artificial and substitute laws, builds a gigantic false economy based on money, and creates a monster whose name is politics. Not to mention religious convulsions. Some religious leaders have dreamed of a god in two persons or even three, others very many gods, and others only one father. From the imagination arise all sorts of religions and their doctrines and their great gods, depending on the mood and needs of the community. Then indoctrination is the pure result of such actions of certain leaders. Instilling patterns, culture, customs, social and religious beliefs, it becomes a normality, a tradition. Today we are in all its glory imbued with indoctrination to the point that we no longer notice it. All this creates a mind that is closed, not very bright and fearful. 
895. Life itself is good. Evolution has taken care of it through the scientists of the cosmos, although they have made many mistakes so that everyone can love and care for each other. It may not be perfect yet when it comes to the food chain, as one must eat the other. But nature, thanks to further mutations, will break free from this as well. It will develop such a system of powering consciousness and the body that there will be no need for the continued existence of such a terrible chain. Civilizations of higher status have long since achieved this. Through scientific research they have helped nature by modifying their genes, improving them in many areas. They've cut the death gene and can live for up to several thousand years at a time. Unfortunately, with the kind of closed-mindedness we currently have, we probably still have a long way to go to serve ourselves such a luxury. Angels need to be more interested in art, love, culture, knowledge. Then they will open their minds wide to the true God. But so honestly, I don't wish anyone a long life in space. It's better to move to heaven right away. Higher civilizations have the same problems. 896. Adulthood is a terrible seriousness, and it shouldn't be that way at all. Seriousness is not happiness, but a form of depression, resulting from complaining and dissatisfaction. The adult mind, instead of absorbing knowledge in nature, has closed down and conceived of producing toxic, serious and even fanatically religious knowledge. Is a child or any animal a follower of any religion or idea? No one has heard of it. The more fear in a person, the more fanatical he becomes. And fear always comes from ignorance. That's why it's worthwhile to search, to ponder, to free the mind from ossified school knowledge. Learn and reach higher and higher. The more the mind knows, the more it can be spontaneous, free. A mind that knows without limits can love the whole world. Greater knowledge, greater love, greater culture and joy, better fun and better health. The more you know, the greater you are in spirit. Padre Pio's words. 897. Almost no one manages to preserve, already in adulthood, the way of life of a young child. An adult sees only the problems that he almost always creates for himself. The child doesn't see them, doesn't deal with them, moves on in case of difficulties and looks for the next fun, joy, smile. Adults should be able to return to their childish consciousness. This would make them happy. 898. In order to achieve happiness, you need to have some luck in the process. It is extremely difficult to meet a free, liberated and happy man. But there are such people. Most of them are among children. Children do nothing but play. They are constantly engaged in playing pranks and making life more pleasant. Children have the good fortune to rejoice because they have not yet imbibed the rigid thinking, seriousness, doctrines, beliefs, concepts and greed of adults. Even the philosopher Jesus noticed this when he pointed out to adults. Unless you become as these children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. This is a very positive statement by the great angel. 899. Happiness is a game of progress and taste in the material dimension. In the heavenly dimension, there is no progress because there is fullness of life. 900. In the human body, in addition to physical and spiritual love, it is necessary to collect valuable experiences from a temporary stay here in this part of the galaxy. All this is accomplished in stages. Let's not forget this, because it will help us to go out on a limb, to understand where our ultimate goal is, and the goal is eternal fun in heaven. Jesus even defined it symbolically. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a wedding feast. 901. Freedom is wonderful, developmental. It is like a gentle dance with hugging and whispering the words, I love. That is why it is so very important. It is impossible to imagine life without freedom at all. 902. In life it is necessary to try to look for and notice the most important, the most beautiful, so that it can pull us forward. If one wades in negative feelings, one pulls downwards, towards the destruction of consciousness. 903. If to function only optimistically, with a smile, love and joy, then progress drives itself and propels. Just pondering, reading about such things, works very favorably for a better state of consciousness. 
death considering it, works not so well for the soul. That's why those who work in the dissecting room drink a lot of alcohol to kill the depressing sights and feelings. I know because I once visited a dissecting room twice, when I worked as a medical registrar in a hospital's cancer ward in the 1980s. Anyway, I witnessed many deaths. I helped some people die. I saw a person being cut into pieces. It is not a pleasant sight. In the same way, to decry the death of Jesus is not a good thing. It depresses and makes many people depressed. Jesus preached love and knowledge of eternity. He did not promote death. Death nota bene produced by angels in their pride. Death has nothing to do with the ideas of the magnificent Jesus. In heaven, no one suffers or dies. 904. Man, his consciousness, feelings, love has an additional tendency to speed up. Unusual. The more he loves, the more he knows, the faster he achieves greater happiness. In those whose consciousness would be eliminated, nature does everything to prevent this from happening. Because it knows what it can give this consciousness as a gift. It even prolongs the agony in the hope that the program of a given consciousness will unlock and eventually reach its goal heaven. But nature can also kill at once. This is a different model of the same thing. 905. Nature is extremely patient and indulgent to any civilization. It desires only one thing development, freedom and love, and this sets the course for eternal pleasure for all. An extremely arduous process, but the most wonderful thing is its finale, an eternal life of pleasure. This was the premise of civilization in space, but it didn't work out. The cosmos is deteriorating, exploding every now and then, threatening in peaceful life. It's not easy, and Jesus talked about it. Therefore, it is better to return to the Father. Behind the curtain is safe and happy. The real heaven is beyond the cosmos. 906. After Jesus, a troubled morality was created, a twisted conscience, laws, dogmas and regulations, religious, ecclesiastical and state prisons where bishops were the highest judges. Jesus preached irreligion based on respect and love, and it has been made a tool of opinion, denominationalism, and propaganda, resulting in inquisitions, dogma, and perpetual religious wars. Jesus had a merciful heart, tolerant in a million ways. He forgave persecutors, blessed children and prisoners, and sent his greatest sympathies to those on the path of love, knowledge of the galaxies and the beyond. This is what the help of Jesus and his mom is about, that they showed the space of love and tolerance, the space of a good heart. This is what the so-called salvation is all about. And today, if you don't go to confession and church, you will be thrown out of it and condemned forever. It is forbidden to do so. Everyone has love and awareness to consider. Seek and ye shall find. This is enough to go higher after death. It is not even necessary to be baptized or take communion. Salvation is love however we understand and feel it. It is the only thing that wings us to long for eternal life. This is what Jesus knew and spoke of. Do you not know that you are the temple? This is the kind of church Jesus had in mind. Be good, it takes so little to be saved, Padre Pio's words. 907. Jesus will not personally save anyone and did not save anyone. All he did was help people understand how to live in order to achieve angelicity. He managed to break through with divine love to earth. And this idea saves everyone from within, if one finds it consciously. Jesus with this idea has been to many planets in the galaxy, Stefani Horak's words. I asked her about this in Zakopane, when she was still alive. 908. The typical view of salvation is for the use of high government and church officials. The Bible has been modified more than once in order to preserve such and not a different picture for generations and thus have society to themselves. Wealth and pride will not help people achieve their spiritual goal. 909. Jesus said, they will come after me who will do greater things than I. Jesus was just an angel, and the Jewish politicians made him the God of the universe. Mary was also an angel on a par with Jesus and us. It's just that Jesus and Mary never came out of heaven to create private mate material galaxies as we did. And now fortunately, we are slowly withdrawing from this odyssey to return there, as Jesus talked about. 
but the most significant thoughts of Jesus were not even written down. Something was attempted to be edited there, with the participation of exegetes and biblical scholars, but that's not it. Jesus is something completely different from the teachings of the church with its dogmas and morals. To get closer to Jesus, the church would have to change a lot, become warm, non-theological, non-dogmatic, focused on love of neighbor and nothing else. Only personal love saves, no one will love for us. We have to do it ourselves, and Jesus won't help here. At most we can take an example from him, when he sat down with tax collectors and adulteresses, drank and ate with them, talked with them, to bring them closer to the goal. He told them about great and wonderful things. He convinced and gave them hope that they would be the ones to precede all the Jewish disciples and priests to the kingdom of heaven. It is necessary to take the example of Jesus' attitudes, even if you were to receive a hundred thousand communions. It will not give you anything. These are the words of Padre Pio, as he told me at a talk in Nawahuta. Shocking, no, I myself took communion at Mass every day then. Love and forgiveness count, not the amount of bread eaten and wine drunk at the altar. It all needs to be disenchanted. For devotional priests, theologians, professors, church habilitants, this will be very difficult to swallow. And who promised who that the life of the Spirit on earth would be easy? The church has gone over the edge for centuries. It will have to back out of it, and it will withdraw. A matter of time, it will even accept reincarnation, as Padre Pio told me. Original verse computer social gardens at the distance of philosophical hypotheses are preyed upon by selfish coordination of thoughts and actions. Strengths of the phenomenon of egoism are possessiveness and stars of subjective consolations. Fear of losing anything rests in a huge body armor. All it takes is a small ball of civilized chemistry, and pain and despair already prevail around the generations. The triumph of knowledge means a massive campaign against even the smallest gestures of love. Misfortunes walk in pairs fear and hatred. This is the prey of a heart robbed of love, and love cannot be replaced by anything, even if computers came to the rescue nine. Hundred and ten. Christ is a visitor from the hereafter. He is one of those angels who never came out of heaven. Unlike those, as it happened to all the inhabitants of the galaxies. The same is true of his earthly mom, she is an angel from heaven. They came down here voluntarily. This was discussed earlier. They undertook a mission on earth in proclaiming the knowledge of the superiority of heaven over the material worlds, created by angels as private independent of God, heavens. They were born into a nation to lift it up, but failed. They rejected the luminous angels. But there was one more goal, to bring this knowledge of the hereafter to all concerned. To expand it to the entire planet. It succeeded, but partially, because what was done with this knowledge, it makes you want to cry. In the Gospels, only the words about loving your neighbor are true. The rest are meticulously orchestrated lies for religious conquest by the rulers of a declining empire. In addition, no one knows who wrote the Gospels 70 years after the events. There were many of these records circulating. They were notebooks for catechumens. Something was written that should never have seen the light of day. A powerful religion was slowly built on Jewish foundations. And that was the point. The Vatican knows this and has the papers to prove it, but it does not admit it. Someday this will come to light. Jesus was a completely different person than the church currently portrays him. He was an angel like any of us. Islam also recognizes Jesus as an angel, a prophet only. A similar story was known much earlier with the Sumerians. Annunciation, birth, communion, cup, resurrection. Priestly costumes copied from the pharaohs. Everything was taken from deep antiquity. But this does not prevent you from believing and celebrating holidays today. Everything can be used positively for the growth of your soul, to have more hope and love for the world. Besides, Jesus decided to pass through many planets to preach after the unity of the angels of the cosmos with God. This is not talked about. He was born on many planets in the galaxy. We, by the way, did it too. 
and we still do, but for different reasons. Jesus had only one purpose, to expand love, to help souls enter back into the original heaven. 9-11, the sun is contentment, the shadows dissatisfaction. You are the sun and always remain so for everyone. The sun warms, relaxes, and divinely relaxes. 9-12, the soul does not need memory. Memory is something bad for it. Memory is only related to the human body. The soul is on fire, living without memory, but it knows whatever it wants. It responds to beauty and caresses. The soul takes heaven as it is, for a living, pondering and such freaky deaky. This is only done on earth due to the limitations of feeling and seeing perception. The life of the soul is quite different from the life of the body. When we achieve the spiritual body, in which the soul will dress, then everything will be as it should be. Full integration of the soul with the senses of the heavenly, beautiful body. Those who designed human bodies for us, adding genetic evolutionary elements to them, the creators from other extraterrestrial civilizations, knew that they had to apply some memory to our bodies. Otherwise, we would walk around like drunk in the ditches. We would live without composition and order. The soul is memoryless. It sees, delights, and adores. It is spontaneous and receptive to heavenly adventures. This is its eternal life. The soul and its heavenly body is such a beautiful dimension that even earthly artists do not yet feel it. Reviving Song The winds have quieted, sacred images have appeared. Above the fields the mist billowed. The farthest horizons are visible like spring's joyful flowers. Color vision sharpened. Everything is white blushing and glowing. I can't keep myself from sighing soulfully from mystical song. Everything is beautiful. My sweat combines with your tears. The wedding is getting bigger and bigger. More and more love rolled into the abyss, the wheel of insignificance. The clocks have struck the times of revival. All is new and the song of rebirth comes alive again. Let no one cry anymore. Justice is promised. Days full of splendor 913. What will we talk about energies, holograms, quanta, atoms, etc.? How basic electricity, whether direct or alternating, is still a huge mystery, not fully deciphered. Let alone other, subtle energies even in the human body, which cannot be seen by any device. About them even less is known, nothing. Theories are there, but they do not always last long. Publications are issued, a lot of money is made for an apparent discovery, and then another change. And where is the soul, love its subtle rays? Still a huge mystery. And where is the talk of breaking atoms with thoughts? 914. Today's soul is supposed to be progressive. It should renounce nothing, no technology, and no cultural trends. All wealth is assigned to it from the very beginning of its existence. But it is known, after coming out of heaven, many things are messed up, which are waiting to be corrected. Modernity of the soul does not mean moving away from good patterns, but on the other hand, it is necessary to create the patterns of today, by means of which the current progress among computers, machines, and all this reality surrounding us is realized. We are not an extension of people who lived 300 years ago or 1000 years ago. These are different eras, but there is one thing we cannot walk away from, pleasurable love. Love must stand above progress and technologies. First it, and then the rest. The stages of life on Earth are changing. We are moving towards a modern state based on love. Therefore, to progress must be added nobility, and to nobility must be added the knowledge of the true heaven eternal life. 915. Human beings need God, however we imagine Him. He is the intimacy of all our intimate treasures. The most pleasant sensations of soul and body, this is what he created for us, a soul that cannot endure without love. In the cosmos, in the temporary heavens, the more we want to experience this love, because there is a lack of it. And it takes so little to show its splendor. Even fashion is its expression. Literally, anything can become a reason for positive feelings, for love. Even compassion in the face of evil can be a reason for love. So wriggle out of love there is no way. 916. Everything that is bad, unfortunately, comes from a dirty heart. We do not pay attention to the fact that there is a bathroom, soap, and you can wash your soul. 
This bathroom is a deep reflection on the purpose and meaning of the life of consciousness. From the lack of this bath comes corruption, dishonesty, thievery, even of the highest government officials. A dirty heart leads any country to disaster. The lack of a washed heart reverberates in a big way. The unpleasant smell of the soul digests the economy, the equitable distribution of national wealth, etc. When you don't bathe your body, you know what happens. Even perfume won't help. The soul, a much more complex structure. Its unpleasant odor can even extend to the entire territory of the country. Lack of pure, selfless spiritual love, including in economics, the very problems. This is what the rebellious angels in the galaxies have. It is necessary to grind own blemishes on the soul into pure crystal, so that they cease to exist and flaunt others. A scratched diamond cannot be shown at an exhibition. Likewise, a scratched soul cannot enter original heaven. It is necessary to polish and polish own soul constantly, especially on earth. 917. When you have worked out your most precious treasure, the angelic heart, you are no longer able to do anything else in this world, only to love. Because you have understood what a beautiful game heaven is, and you try to bring this heaven into your life. That's why some will consider you a mystic, and others will consider you sick in the mind. But what the hell? But when you give up your heart, because you are crazy for heaven, it stops beating for you. It stares servilely into other hearts, into the heart of God. 918. Reach for the greatest art of your soul, maybe still a little dormant. Reach for her love, harmonious and insanely attractive. Become a mystic of hugging, embracing, soothing heavenly bodies and souls. Just be a prince, a princess eternally in love, flirtatious, alluring with the mystical beauty of heaven. And only enjoy this, because the measure of love is its imaginative play in all circumstances and states of creation, as in heaven so on earth. In general, much is talked about, and usually little is done to deal seriously with the colored soul. Earth has something of heaven, it is its vestibule, Padre Pio's words. 919. The soul is a flirtatious creature, how long a man must court it to possess it. But for that afterwards delight and love, there is no limit. 920. Slander, accusation, denigration. This is what we are most skilled at against others. We pray for prosperity and salvation, while we resent others, put beams under their feet, and even condemn them. All this is a travesty of pure love. At the common table should sit everyone. This would be a true education of love. Soul is primarily a common material and spiritual good. Divisions even in doing good are limiting and very debilitating. Therefore, it is necessary to be able to find a common language with each person. Let it be the language of tolerance. Love is boundlessly tolerant. Love towards everyone and everything. This is the true economic power. For love does not destroy or harm anyone. It desires the best for everyone. This is the very miracle of love. It enchants and brings profit to all, without exception. 921. We live in different political economic systems, but it is good to know that the best of all is the system of love, Padre Pio's words. And one of its qualities is graciousness. This graciousness is the basic form of existence in harmony and respect. Graciousness has something of courage in it. Let's give an example. Graciousness towards wrongdoers. Who among humans would allow themselves to be tolerant or pardon those who cause harm to others? Yet the philosophy of Jesus, of whom I am very fond, presupposes this. It refers directly to the love of enemies. So there is no doubt that love teaches graciousness directly. This begs the question, do we really love when we condemn and get angry with others? This very education is lacking. Bad people would not be like this if they were educated to love and tolerance. A mother to her own child will forgive everything, but a stranger's child is already worse off. God has not condemned anyone and will not condemn anyone. For all are his children. They came from heaven and he will not condemn them. On the contrary, he blessed them on their way. Today, to all civilizations in the galaxies, he gently suggests better solutions than violence or beliefs from which violence is born. 
Love does not need beliefs, religion, or an army. This is the idea of love. Let's at least strive for it spiritually. It will already be much. Why is it necessary to forgive? Because we are all fallen angels as one in the whole cosmos. So we have identity problems. We seek often and forceful solutions to know this. But this is a mistake. This is not the way to go. Hurt leads to nothing. Love, on the other hand, liberates to truth and peace. 922. The battle should be fought not with laws, politicians, but with yourself. When you win yourself, you will create ideal laws for yourself and the state. You are to fight not against the body, of course, but against stubbornness, beliefs, rudeness, intolerance, envy, jealousy, stinginess, pride. If a person overcomes himself, the unrest in the world will disappear. Then he will be able to live a fully contented life. Joyful music, singing and balls will reign. 923. Fable. A pleasant and precious thing happened. Two fairy tale beings went from acquaintance to friendship. In the construction of the rapprochement of hearts, this act is a covenant for the arrival of wonderful moments and experiences on this occasion. Friendship is one of the conditions for communication and development of any fairy tale. This also poses the question of how friendship will affect the forms that express this beautiful feeling. But there is no need to worry about it. The fairy tale phenomenon has all the possibilities and ways to give it the right expression. A fairy tale is a universe of possibilities, an infinity of moving, tasting and exploring. Beyond the beginning, with a spatial motif and then always from the flight of eternity, with a breath without limits, life and love arose, joy arose, and emptiness will never be born anywhere because there never is one. Whatever you say will testify to impermanence and eternity, speak, and you will always speak of life and death. Flowers will tell tell of luck and fire will tell of misfortune. Lost opinions of life, not humble stigmatize, suppress, small, heart behind the rib cage, to whom the written patience will comprehend lifetimes distant lines and heights of oblivion will shatter it on the other side of the face, 924. The rule of thumb is, let everyone do their part to bring more love into the world. So radiate love where you can and how you can. You don't even have to say anything about it. Radiate with your soul. Every person can perceive this feeling, on the surface or somewhere deeper. He will feel your love with certainty and will be surprised inwardly or even delighted not knowing the reason for his joy. 925. If it were not for the soul with its noble love, which has an intuition directed towards the civilization of love, I don't know if this world would still exist. Let us thank our wonderful soul that it is able to love in this way. What is good and beautiful comes ultimately from it. Let us not even think about evil. Let's avoid it with a big bow. Evil is an accident at work in the cosmos. We can fix it by loving even more. The soul has no evil in nature, but goodness itself. However, a scratch was created and we produce evil. We have kept the ideal of it still in our minds. This keeps us alive, hope grows. 926. Man, a former angel, after many unfavorable unfavorable experiences in the galaxies will someday become one again, but already for eternity. He will not be fooled again by corrupted, non-spiritual atoms of material light, Everyone will one day stand at the right hand of God. God has such a plan to save every soul. I haven't seen anyone in hell yet, Padre Pio's words of conversation. This is what man was born for in the world of limited matter, to find the true fires of life, not the vegetation and loss of love that happens here every day. 927. After the great quarrels of souls in the cosmos, we were sent to earth in a very incomplete limited form. Now we are building our angelhood true, humble and loving. But not all of us yet, that's why there are conflicts and wars. Political parties that promote hatred and furious competition. It's harder in this life, but it's also not about us throwing ourselves into the sea of human affairs and forgetting again what we live for. Anyone who wants to discover his angelic soul must come across this knowledge. Otherwise, he will remain under the force of chaos manipulation, scientific and theological views, which, after all, are not the truth, but only a game of mysteries. 
Seek and ye shall find. This is the encouragement to human angels that the philosopher Jesus, a lover of neighborly love, magnificently stated. The road ahead is open directly to heaven, not into space back. 928. The soul that begins to work in search of its most most wonderful rays must ask for help from those who never came, came out of heaven and are still there. This help is needed. First of all, we communicate with heaven through them, and besides that, we create again a community, a unity. They will help us if we humbly ask. Second, they will teach us the ability to walk among the hail of human affairs. To ask, apologize, and give thanks, this is a good habit, Padre Pio's words. Apologize for all the galaxies created unnecessarily, and ask also for the civilizations and beings that live in them. As if there is no real heaven. All aliens in galaxies, private heavens, are also in a similar situation to us. We all once left heaven, and now we have problems to return there. It has become so that worlds, private heavens, tempt us with their attractions and bind us here, despite the suffering and death we have inflicted on ourselves. The most important thing is to return by some miracle to the cosmos, the original heaven, created by God, and not the pseudo-paradise, the cosmos of angels in which we now live and effectively suffer. 929. Here on earth we already have free will. It may not be quite as we would like it to be, but it is there. There are planets where it does not yet exist. There are some souls who don't even see the sun yet. Padre Pio's words. Anyway, we don't have to look far. The same thing is happening in our country. Consider animals. They are conditioned by instinct. They have to do what nature tells them to do. So they mainly engage in hunting to support the family and themselves. Out of necessity, of course, so animals don't exactly have free will. Well, and yet they are limited in many ways, despite having a code of intelligence. Free will has always been there, especially in heaven. Then after leaving it, the errant hierarchies took it away from some. Then it was restored again, but no longer to all civilizations. But I would add that the restoration of this freedom happened thanks to the Almighty God, who made it possible for the more enlightened to regain it. Let's not forget, by the way, that it was the Almighty who first extended his hand of consent to the fallen Padre Pio's words, to the hierarchies and superiors of these galactic worlds, failed heavens. Created by angels, we used to take part in this. If we teleport to heaven, we won't care much about these galaxies anymore. And love is the only teleportation into those eternal delightful lands. 930. God, how I love you devotion, and why are you hiding from me? Do you not like me? Or maybe I do not possess the eyesight? After all, I can see everything, except you. Maybe I need some special glasses. I will look for them, I promise. 931. Trust only in love. Nothing else. Love is good and forgiving. It can retreat if necessary and knows how to sacrifice. Seemingly such an obvious thing, and the cosmos is supposedly going in a completely different direction. So the individual of love counts. Soul, only it can become the fullness of love. When souls become such, the world will change vector. 932. It is said and we know from experience that creation is imperfect. All dimensions are imperfect. Angels are not ideals in this universe. They manipulate us. Rulers do the same. Monarchs, presidents, prime ministers, etc. So who to trust? No system gives us a guarantee of fairness. The only way out, and to do it even before the personal death of the body, go stubbornly for the treasures of the original, original and eternal state heaven. Here on the planets of space, everything will ultimately fail us, because it is related to limited reason and perishable material. Only our own soul will not do that. It is worth bowing low to it, because it is a gift from God amazing. 933. We can't really rely on people. People are only people. Padre Pio's words, with a very small horizon of impressions. They don't know everything. You should only trust your intuition. And if your imagination encounters a similar one, they can touch each other, but not convince you of anything. 934. To get to heaven, it is necessary to break through all forces, all powers and all elements, all power that limits us, 
anarchy that destabilizes us, all hierarchies, dominions, all space scientists, all geneticists. All of them must be vanquished, not to be enchanted by them. To get to heaven's gates they must be told, no, reason has deceived you. You are not concerned with eternity, with the soul, but with the body, which will die anyway. Around it revolves your material world, the scientific world. You have left heaven aside, you deceive all the sensitive and delicate angels. 935. The material world traps people on its leash. But when this leash is voluntarily cut by man with his consciousness, the eyes of the spirit are opened. The blindness of progress and materialism expressed in millions of ways creates an effective cataract on the eyes of the spirit. The soul is thus blind, and then the ego rules. The ego possesses vision like a falcon. It overlooks no material gain, and it is blind to the spirit. 936 Fable Two friends met in champagne moods at the buffet. Loose conversation, music hits from the pop area, and rock hits. In a word, atmosphere. After a long time, the conversation unexpectedly touched on topics bordering on fantasy. They talked in a relaxed manner, without emotion or dragging on either side, fantasizing about this, that. In the process, they came to some interesting takeaways. They concluded that it is possible to enter with the mind into a real fairy tale world. They considered to themselves, but it depends on what kind of fairy tale we want to live in. For it to be wonderful, a fairy tale must be created through a prism of beauty, subtlety, and above all, it should be embraced by the depth of love. With a well-adjusted heart, fairy tales can be wonderful. They can be viewed from many perspectives, transferring the feeling to various spaces, transforming the images in any way the spirit of imagination can display. Layer by layer entering the animations, at all levels of conscious feeling. In the world of fairy tales, there are no limits, no theories. There is only the desire to create and explore, the desire to love, to adore. And there you go, the buffet atmosphere, the bustle, the noise and the conversation went on in such an interesting, fabulous way. 937. If someone asks you for money, this is a very vague request. If he asked you to pray for him or his business, that's a real spiritual request. But everyone just wants money. Maybe they don't know their real needs yet? Yes, you need to know how to share in pennies. As you give, for you it will be a spiritual dimension. For the taker, not necessarily. Padre Pio once said, If the church and rich people in Poland shared their money and threw it into a common basket, there would be enough for everyone, and even for the poor from abroad. Sharing, then, is important. It's about us generating this spirit in ourselves for the future. In heaven, God shares everything with everyone. And there is no problem. And supposedly we are like Him. 938. Everything is a search, everything is an experience, learning and finding at least a scrap of joy in this mysterious world. Spoiled by the scientists of the galaxy's angels, what came back from the Father's house to see what can be done beyond the veil. And with their science wisdom they made suffering, sleeping, eating, time. This is their achievement, a patent for life, a little bit like not fitting our spiritual needs. 939. War accomplishes nothing. You will not destroy evil with this method. You can't. At most you will renew the structures of evil with this. Aggressive election campaigns. They accomplish nothing. They grind the atoms of evil. There must be example, good habits, harmony, tolerance and love. Basic honesty and chivalry. Only this opens the soul to eternity and understanding of life, to a good economy of existence here in the world. Reason tells us to cut everything bad into the trunk. This is true, but there will be no peace because of this, nor the basis for it. Only love makes a revolution peaceful. Many billions of souls in the cosmos gain from this method every day. Only love brings profit. The point is not to become a martyr, but to martyr to death own selfishness, whatever it may be. This is a good way to peace and international family harmony. 940. Often in life it is like at a crossroads, seemingly the rules clear, but there are situations that the rules did not foresee, and you can barely avoid a collision. 
We anticipate many things, it would seem, otherwise it should not be. And here, Trake. After winter, a hole in the sidewalk, you twist your leg, you land at the doctor. Everything changes at home. Instead of you being served, you are served. A beautiful experience, although painful. Many positives can be drawn from it. How much love can be squeezed out of it? Disbelief flame blown out, on the shore of soul sat disbelief, in your hands changed the shape of pearl of the only one fragrances flew away. At the bottom of pupils rock darkness. Where is your smile? Soul, where are your arms full of sweetness? What happened? Where is your face? Why did it stop shining? Lands unknown before you. Soul, where is your tenderness from dusk to dawn? Why did you close your eyes? Wake up. Soul woven from rainbows. Why did you forget everything? I love you. Awake. 941. It is not only secular or ecclesiastical science that has something to say when it comes to considering evolution. Material existentialism. The independent soul, knowledge from intuitive sensations, inner heart science, logical knowledge of the causes of science. Love. This is still the express ignorance of many scientists, thinkers and clergymen of various religions. Spirit knows everything about matter. Materialists know nothing, neither about the soul nor about matter. Clergymen are in the same situation as materialists. Only rituals and worship in life different. Unbelief sometimes is more faith than belief. In the words of Padre Pio, often non-believers are closer to God than believers. I also asked if he learned the mysteries of matter, he replied. Yes. 942. Destroying culture, like building it, is within the scope of human freedom. To develop knowledge of perfect equality, and then to practice it, it is impossible outside of love. It is unattainable. The control of scientists over the processes of life, despite the strong tendencies of different points of view on life, is not yet the real axis of the world. Science is not so far advanced that it can replace faith. It is also the confusion of scientific, sociological, and other processes that is evident all around. The struggle against illiteracy, hunger, terrorism. The best evidence of how far we are from liberation and comfort. More strangely, these backwardness, instead of disappearing over time, persist, and more and more in concentrated substance, encountering fertile ground for it. The culture of the world has undoubtedly grown, but as it has grown, the culture of spiritual knowledge has not followed. The result is a lack of love and hope, and thus the lack of peace in the world. Love never ceases, not like prophecies that will end, or like the gift of tongues that will disappear, or like knowledge that will be lacking. However, there is something in these words of Paul of Tarsus. Padre Pio told me that with my writings I would humiliate all the scholars and greats of this world. Padre fired a rocket, you have to admit. It's been so long since he told me that I don't pay any attention to it at all. Normality. Oh, I forgot to add, they will paint you with a pen in hand. It's a good thing that this will be after my bodily decay, after the agony. But cool, because I did my part. 943. Do not give in to fatigue or spiritual laziness, which is not to say that one does not need to rest, one should. Calmness, tranquility, a mind fresh and volatile, not charged with disputes and vulgar worldly information, such are the qualities of spiritual development. We don't realize how easy it is to soil our souls, especially with politics and media news. It takes distance. Politics and television educate us rather negatively. So far, Yes, it is necessary to know in general what is going on, but do not involve your soul in it. When you see an evil, an accident, you can pray to mitigate it. Time and place does not matter. Once there was an earthquake in Italy. Many died, some people were alive under the rubble. Padre Pio told me to offer my prayers and annoyances for them. It would help them get out of there. This is what I did, this is true knowledge. 944. It is not so much the action itself that is important, but the calmness. Action, too, can take you out of balance. Hardly, even an excess of prayers similarly. If prayer causes stress, it's not good. God wishes no one ill and stresses illness, Padre Pio's words. If already acting, then very controlled, balanced and prayer not long. 
Even mentioning God several times a day is enough. This is enough. The most important thing is calmness. Because only in this atmosphere can the gentleness of love blossom. God is very gentle. As he sees quarrels in families, he withdraws from their homes. But he still loves from a distance. If I see you quarreling in your apartment with your family, I flee the room. Padre Pio's words. 945. What are you doing? Nothing much. I think to myself about silly things. How the world was created. But what specifically? I'm just building my soul from the beginning. Because I somehow don't like it in this version of experience. And the body even more. 946. Do not reject anyone. Because by doing so you lose the will to live. Do not reject I know it will hurt. But for this will come the understanding of meaning. And then a kiss from God. 947. The truth is, we faintly remember our palaces in heaven. We have forgotten much, much, how it was there. Fortunately, songs about love remind us a little of heavenly love. 948. The most important thing is not love for own soul. But the most important thing is love for the spiritual world. Where that soul comes from. Because there is its anchoring. There its eternal love is anchored. The spiritual world is love itself. This is the most important thing. Without the spiritual world, and there everyone has his beautiful palace to live in, what does my soul mean? Nothing. And since we produce the spirit world around us through feeling and imagination, let us appreciate love here as well. Its finale, however, will be in heaven. 949. Humans are most attracted to beauty and harmony. We look for beauty everywhere. We tend to reject ugliness. We don't like ugly things, because there is no ugliness in heaven. And this we remember. The same is true of character. We don't like bad characters. Rather, we look for good people around us. We all say that the most important thing is the inside, not the outside. Good. But why the inside, the soul? Because she is precisely the most beautiful. So we find out for ourselves what we tend to. To beauty. We feel sentiment for the soul, we feel its taste, its ideal. So we are always striving, consciously or not, for beauty and harmony. By smiling and enjoying life, we express this ideal. 950. Eroticism is not corporeal. It only expresses itself through the senses and allurements of the body. Eroticism is a state of the soul. When we talk about selfless love, in the heart we feel joy, warmth, and would like to hug that someone because of it. These are normal reactions. Dressing, tuning, nudity, nude poems, songs, serenades, art, creativity, theater, film, music, even serious music, are all characterized by the beauty of the soul, the beauty of eroticism. But we don't want to talk about it openly, because sometimes this human eroticism goes beyond its beauty and is too possessive, exploitative. This only happens in the cosmos. In heaven, eroticism is pure, beautiful, fabulous, like a down pillow to sleep on, like a wonderfully fragrant flower from which you can't tear yourself away. In heaven all will be yours in Zosia Marisia, Padre Pio's words. I once asked Padre Pio about Marilyn Monroe. He said, she is already in heaven for a long time because she loved very much. 951. The angels which once came out of heaven programmed us with not knowledge but ignorance. That's why we have trouble recognizing everything. Even love is sometimes a mystery to us. We promise ourselves greatness, and sometimes we get a pinch on the nose. It didn't work out, if we had foreseen it, etc. 952. Forget talking a little, start loving, radiate kindness and elegance. 953. Love in material galaxies has two tasks, or at least that's what should happen in them. To give love, to indulge in love for and with others, and to help each other. Love helps always, because it is good and forgiving. In the latter task, salvific energy for our souls is self-generated. The reward for love is salvation, or even greater love. 954. Scientists from worlds where intellect and technology stand at a higher level, who have unparalleled abilities to create much more, such as the creation of simple life forms, turn out to be bigger chumps than our scientists on Earth, who know little, or one could even say almost nothing about life. Why? Well, precisely because those there do not let go, 
they like materialism all the time, they work professionally, they show themselves as in the party. In order to suck up to their bosses' higher beings, they want to show that they can keep this world in check. But I must admit that there was one who spoke the truth about this reality and never sucked up to anyone. He was Jesus. Continuing further, I will say this, all civilizations existing in countless galaxies, compared to the original heaven, are actually devilish. Why? Because they are typically scientific. Science rips them apart and violates them. Science means ignorance. That's why science was created. It goes from ignorance to knowledge, and then to pride and hatred, and again to ignorance, a competition of opinion and empiricism. All these worlds are miserable, afflicted with disease, devoid of love. In the galaxies, they are left with only ascetic scientific misery, without heart and warmth. Heaven original with God is quite something else. There let us all strive together. 955. God loves you constantly. He gave you consciousness so that you can flaunt it in all directions. To love and learn about life forms. You have the opportunity to be conscious all the time for free. The soul, this is his creation. But will you, even for 20 seconds, think about this gift? I'm not talking about God anymore. I you probably don't think about him at all. At least that's how most aliens in the galaxies have it. But there are exceptional souls, which already feel God. But only after many millions of years of struggle, they have reached this point. There are many such people even on our Earth. 956. Let us realize that everything human and material is the work of angels who once came down from heaven, and not God. Philosophies, religions, marriages, partnerships, homosexual relationships, these are all tools of the game of fallen angels, disguised in various cosmic bodies, soul coverings. Just as imperfect is the cosmos, atoms and quanta, so human needs of the body are imperfections programmed in a strange way, incompatible with the needs of the soul. The soul always wants beautiful and wonderful. And here various deviations happen. In the cosmos, every now and then some sun goes out, another is born. Meteorites fall on the planets, destroying even entire civilizations. Everything changes from moment to moment. There is a lack of divine peace and selfless love. A meteorite hits a planet with great force, a hunter shoots a boar, a poacher sets a snare to kill. Is this what our heaven is supposed to look like? No, it is completely different. It exists beyond these atoms, beyond these worlds. Perfection itself. 957. Currently, the Earth's civilization is at the stage of another transformation of gaining knowledge, getting closer to that primordial energy of life, God. For the same reason, I love the followers of atheism as much as the believers in God and the Church. People seeing evil, atheism, get terribly upset, condemn, cannot afford tolerance, calm. Rather, there should be a deeper understanding of the relationship between good and evil. Perhaps then we would progress faster on the path of evolution of consciousness, moving towards God's delightful love. Everyone here was born consciously. He knew before he was born who he was going to be, and what he wanted to do, and why. He is a believer or not, it doesn't matter. Everyone will save himself, Padre Pio's words. Love will eventually take everyone in, so that they can be eternally happy. Hell is the absence of goodness and joy. It is the absence of selfless love, and it can happen anywhere in the cosmos. In some sense, the cosmos itself is hell, although for its founders it was supposed to be heaven. As we can see heaven is not. 958. All those who live a life based on self-love after leaving the body must continue to purify their souls. This process continues until they gain full beautiful love for all. Jesus was born precisely to talk about this. For this purpose, he gathered a few friends so that they too would tell people the same thing. Love, 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 this is the whole teaching of Jesus. So the life of a person is a matter of constant progress in the spirit. First working on understanding the meaning of life, then refining own thoughts and feelings, then transforming all material processes into love. Egoism never leads to the experience of higher truths and sensations. 959. 
It's difficult to have happiness on earth due to fickle feelings, impulses and misguided reasoning, which is never fully true. But nevertheless, it is necessary to strive for it, look for the good qualities of life, and especially it is necessary to control oneself. For here lies the source of all things, good and bad, to control impulses and nerves. It is better sometimes to bite your tongue than to say one word too many. Or when things are pretty bad, drink lemon balm. Eventually swallow a pill to calm down, Padre Pio's words. A glass of wine or a glass of vodka can also help. Peace is the most important thing. Love, though it can be emotional, and it is, does not disturb peace. 960. Just calm. A calm mind is a symptom of harmonious cooperation between people. It is a symptom of happiness in families. Calmness is born from hope for a better tomorrow, from faith in a higher world, and above all from love of own neighbor, which directly leads to heaven. 961. Here there is suffering, and there in the hereafter, in heaven, in the gardens of delight, there is no suffering, because it was never there. What does it turn out to be? The outer worlds, the heavens, you have to know how to create. To make them as, God created heaven, which to this day is beautiful, lasting and indestructible, Padre Pio's words. It turns out that the creatures, that is, we angels, what once came out of heaven, do not know how to create as perfectly as God. That's why it came out as it did. Even computers hang up. The cosmos is collapsing. So let's return to the indestructible palaces. But, without showing love, it is difficult to get back there. It is necessary to be ready for great love. Your life will be a great book of great adventures, Padre Pio's words. To enter there, it is necessary to have culture, refinement of character, and the most beautiful dress of feelings. They won't let you in otherwise. And if they let you in, they will never again let you out into the material world beyond the veil of heaven. They are there waiting for us longingly. We miss you in heaven, Padre Pio's words. They can't wait for us to finish our journey through the failed cosmos and meet all of us together for a boisterous party in heaven. 962. It was not from a loving and wise heart, but from proud knowledge that the empire of evil arose. Knowledge tempts and knowledge enslaves. And now I will say something very unpopular after Papadre Pio. Ignorance, too, is a grace for the soul, desiring to go through this life to heaven. Once you stop desiring knowledge and begin to strive for a good heart, knowledge will visit you on its own, without learning it. Knowledge does not reside only in books. She is everywhere, in the flower, in the sun and the moon. There in heaven, everything is open, creative, creative with beauty and love. Love that is spread by imagination and feeling, effortlessly but with the power of sensation. There, nothing is needed, nothing is required, only wanted. Padre Pio's words. 963. Love cannot be betrayed. You can betray jealous human love. True love is non-jealous. Humanly speaking, this and with God we would have to fight, because he is our competitor in love. He loves everyone equally and is not jealous. Padre Pio's words. But if we become love like him, we will similarly have all of heaven at our disposal, as we will only be willing and pleased to live there. What conclusion? You must become God in God, love in love. And with this moment, you will make yourself a deity of divine love for all who will only pay attention to you. You will exist in the source of eternal pleasure. Is there anything more you need? 964. Mysticism is a striving from the images of this world and own body, to the center of the images of the soul. And the worlds are for the eyes of the body and the imagination of the soul, somewhat similar. Sometimes they confuse us with their reality, but they share, however, a degree of permanence and happiness between them. The body of the soul is real heaven, the body of the ego singularity, changeable and prone to depression. Two similar worlds within us, and how different in their experience, reality and sensation. Which one is better for us? Everyone decides for themselves throughout history what they want, what they expect, and what would suit them best in the core of their consciousness. Simple, but complicated by knowledge and ignorance, hope and hopelessness, love and hate, peace and the bitterness of anxiety. 
but shouldn't we choose to straighten our paths of thinking? Reducing complexities and amplifying notions of life accelerates the momentum of desires and sharpens them towards the sublime, dynamic delight of heaven. Destined for everyone, without exception. 965. We have wonderful senses, we perceive the world with them. The soul sees the beauty of this world through the body. However, there is something more. The soul has a body and senses from a higher realm, and what they see and touch, we can only imagine, if we have enough of this imagination. There are bodies on the other side too. But there's a small problem. You have to dress yourself in this body from the higher realms and start using it like beautiful clothes on the body. It is waiting for us. And everyone wants, after all, the greatest and most beautiful happiness possible. The body of the upper classes does not die anymore. It is always beautiful and young. Photos of youth a little make a memory from heaven. Longings for goodness and beauty, for warm feelings, also direct us to eternal heaven. There we have feelings, wonderful clothes, beautiful music, the likes of which have never been heard on earth, Padre Pio's words. 966. Human habits, the culture in which we were raised, shape our views. To some extent, they are necessary for the ego to hold on to something, so that it doesn't go crazy. But when the ego loses to love, the bickering and convulsions over views will disappear. We will dress in beautiful clothes and admire, respect, and love each other. No noise about rationale. The universality of life, following in peace and love to the ideal, which is the eternal ball of worship in heaven. 967. Love is the throbbing heart of happiness and contentment, not views. What are they for? We only argue because of them. After all, no one has views that are the whole truth. Here the mystery still applies. Even the Bible knows nothing about God, about heaven. Almost everything is different from what the giants of spirituality preach. Love is the note of our existence. The soul is woven from love itself, but someone has ragged the threads on it for us, and we need to reconnect them. Catching these torn threads sometimes takes many lifetimes, and sometimes it is the last on earth. On earth we are born only to find the kingdom of heaven, Padre Pio's words. It's not just about awareness and thinking. It's about loving God anew and concretely someday standing in the power of his heavenly happiness. Yes, thinking comes in handy if one seeks such directions of life and being. 968. Your world must move to dance with love. She is the most important essence of life every second. No matter how you understand love. Do good, don't hurt, smile at everyone. This will be its authentic manifestation. Sometimes you need to shout, but do it with pure intention so that no one can feel the absence of your love. 969. Hyperactivity in new situations, arrogance, hatred towards people who think differently from us. This suppresses and prevents love from entering our minds and hearts. A man of spirit is always joyful in his mind and heart. Nothing can surprise him, surprise him and lift him negatively, seeing various unfriendly things. He is in an inner fortress, where the vipers of the ego have no access. But the beginnings of this perfection of the soul are not so rosy. It litters, oh litters, and sometimes fists clench. But then, you make yourself a lamb of God. I, you open your hands and nothing but love surprises you. Sometimes fists clench, but you have to open them. Padre Pio's words. 970. Fable. The characters in fairy tales don't have to repeat it to themselves to find out what they are for. They know exactly that their purpose is to enjoy life. The adventures of fairy tale characters have only one purpose. To enjoy, to be happy, to be happy, to take pleasure, to be adored. In more colorful worlds, fairy tales are even more colorful. Such were the visions experienced by a certain goddess when she put on her beautiful clothes. And she dressed wonderfully, imaginatively, subtly. You probably don't know for what purpose. This I will tell you to please, to bring joy and delight to the one who would love her with all her heart. 971. Spirit is a magnificent radiation, soothing the heart always present and flowing from enlightened souls and spiritualized minds. The power of the soul, this subtle and loving heart, 
works today as never before. It transforms the commonplace into magnificence. We are in the process of reconnecting us with the source. Thinking spiritually, our bodies become spiritualized even as we eat, drink, and sleep. Under the influence of spiritual reflection, many people experience a complete transformation of life. What is required of us is to become open, loving and accepting of all people as they are. We have not fallen from heaven, although we have fallen in reality, everyone has a huge heritage that they have been creating for millions and more years. Let's go on like this, and we will get to.